Alright, so in this video we want to extend what we talked about in the last video when we looked at graphs of circles and today we want to look at graphs of semicircles. Now we already introduced the two most basic semicircles in the previous video. So we've already seen that when we transpose the basic equation of the circle x squared plus y squared equals 1 to make y the subject, we obtain the equations for two semicircles. We get y equals the positive square root of 1 minus x squared, which is this um, top half of the circle. And we can also get y equals negative square root of 1 minus x squared, which is the bottom half of the circle. Remembering we're talking about the most basic circle centre at the origin, radius of 1 in these particular equations. Okay. Again, we also talked about yesterday, that, or not yesterday, but in the previous video, that um, it also makes sense that the only difference from this equation to this equation is the negative out the front. That is a reflection in the x-axis when we stick a negative out the front of a function and we can see that that's what's happening with the graph. So really we can just think about the one equation and then if we um, stick a negative in the front it's going to reflect that in the x-axis. I like to also think about it as, okay, here y is going to be equal to positive values. So we're here where y is positive above the x-axis. Here y is equal to negative values. So we're looking at the semicircle where the y values are negative. So the bottom half of the semicircle. Okay, that's how I prefer to think about it with the semicircles. Okay, so then we can also transpose the equation to make x the subject rather than y the subject. And when we do that, we get x equals plus or minus the square root of 1 minus y squared. And when we have a look at these two semicircles, this is what we have here. So thinking about that same logic I just talked about the, with the y values here, we've got x is equal to positive numbers. So my, we're looking at the semicircle where the x values are positive. So the right hand side of the cir whole circle. Here is where the x values are negative. So we're looking at the values of the parts of the circle where the x values are negative. So that's the left hand side of the semicircle. Okay, so we've got four possible semicircles with positive y values, top half, with negative y values, bottom half of the semicircle, or with positive x values, the right hand side of the circle, or negative x values, the left hand side of the circle. Okay, then we want to think about that for our more general circles. Okay, so we know that x squared plus y squared equals r squared is a circle with its centre at 0, 0 and the radius of r. So if we then rearrange that into the four different forms, top half, bottom half, right hand half, left hand half, this time with a radius, so centre at 0, 0 still, but this time with a radius of r, not 1. Okay center at 0, 0, radius is r, center is 0, 0, oops, 0, 0, radius is r, center is 0, 0, and the radius is r, okay. So we've got those four semicircles, keeping the center at the origin, but making the radius r this time, and that's where it's going to appear in this equation of a semicircle. Um, and the third one is actually transforming our most general version of the equation of a circle. So that again, we're looking at the four different semicircles. Y is positive, so top half. Y is negative, so bottom half. X is positive, so right hand half. X is negative, so left hand half. This time, however, in all of these circles, we've got center at HK and radius of R. Now, there's a lot of formulas here. I, don't, I wouldn't remember them. I would simply look at the equation, identify that you've got a semicircle. You're going to need to be able to do that. And it's very common for students to confuse equations of semicircles with square root functions. Okay, so being really clear about the difference, we'll talk about that when we have a look at a couple of examples. I would identify, right, this is a semicircle. And then I would ident identify whether it is top half, bottom half, left half or right half of the circle. Okay, and that is really about, is it y equals or x equals? And is it y equals something positive or y equals something negative? x equals something positive or x equals something negative? Decide that first, and then I would rearrange my equation back to the equation of a circle so I can get the centre and the radius right. Okay, I wouldn't bother about remembering these new rules. I would just remember how do I decide which half of the circle it is. And then I would rearrange back to the equation of the circle so I can correctly identify the radius and the centre. 
there's less formulas to remember that way. So let's have a look at sketching some graphs. Sketch the graph of y equals negative square root of 36 minus x squared. Okay, first question is, how do you decide that this is not a square root function? Okay, and it's because the x under the square root, or it might be y depending on the equation, is squared. This is not a square root function. Okay, y equals square root of x. You could get negative square root of x. You could get negative square root of 36 minus x, like we're seeing here. They would be square root functions. x squared under here means that this is a semicircle. Okay, so semicircle, negative y. Okay, so that means we are dealing with this shape, bottom half. Decide that first, and that's from the fact that it's y equals negative numbers. Then I'm going to rearrange my equation. Okay, so I know that y equals negative square root of 36 minus x squared. If I square both sides, the negative squared becomes positive, so that's irrelevant. 36 minus x squared, add x squared to both sides. This is a circle with a centre at the origin and a radius of 6. So I'm going to draw my bottom half semicircle with its centre at the origin and a radius of 6. is a 6, just make sure it's the same, left, right and down, join it up. Now again, intercepts are important, the centre is still important, and also end points. You've now got two end points when you're drawing a semicircle. So again, like the square root graph, solid circles, don't just stop randomly in the middle of nowhere. A solid circle that says I'm stopping here at this point, I'm making a conscious decision, I'm not just randomly lifting my pencil off the paper and they're marking those points with coordinates. Now in this instance, those two endpoints are also intercepts, so we would need to mark them anyway. But if you've got endpoints that aren't on the axis, they need to be marked. Um, so my radius was 6, so this is 6, 0, this is negative 6, 0, and this is 0, negative 6, and my centre is at the origin. Okay, let's draw another one. Sketch the graph of x equals square root of 7 minus y squared. Okay, so x is equal to positive things. So the shape is going to be the right hand side. Okay, after that I'm going to rearrange it back to be an equation of a circle. So y equals square root of 7 minus y squared. Sorry, x equals. So habitual to write y equals square both sides. So x squared equals 7 minus y squared. Add y squared x squared plus y squared equals 7. So we have center at 0, 0 and radius of root 7. Okay, so drawing in our graph, same centers at the origin, so same distance above and below your origin and also same distance out to the right and then joining up with two quarter circles to make your semicircle. Label your intercepts and your endpoints. So this is root 7, 0, this is 0, root 7, and this is 0, negative root 7. Center, let's be clear about that, at the origin. Okay, great. Again, I'm identifying I've got a semicircle because the variable under the square root is being squared. That's how it's different to a square root function. Okay, number three, sketch this graph. Okay, so we've got a bit more going on here, but again, x is equal to negative values. Okay, that's the first thing I'm thinking about. So my shape is where x is negative, the left hand side of the circle. Then I'm going to rearrange it back to the standard form to get my, oh sorry, I've got, there's an error in that, can we make that a y? Otherwise there's two x's in the equation, it's not an equation at all. So x equals negative square root of um, 25 minus y squared plus 4. So x is equal to something negative. It's the left hand side of the circle. Negative x equals negative 25 minus y squared plus 4. Okay, let's rearrange this equation um, back to the standard form. So let's subtract 4 from both sides. x minus 4. Again, this is just algebra. This is just understanding order of operations and how to rearrange equations. Squaring both sides. x minus 4 all squared. Um, is 25 minus y squared, adding y squared, so x minus 4 all squared plus y squared 
equals 25. Okay, so we have center at 4, 0 and radius of 5. Okay, and it's the left hand half of the circle. Alright, so 4, 0, radius of 5. Okay, so 1, 2, 3, 4 is my center. My radius of 5 means that we're going to hit back here at negative uh, 1. I just need to make that a bit bigger. So we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So we're going to be here and here. Now we're going to cross the x-axis, sorry, the y-axis in two places. So let's work out our y-intercepts. Okay, so y-intercept, we let x equal 0. Okay, now you could go back to your original equation in the um, stated equation and let x equal 0, or you could go to your transformed, the manipulated equation that we've done over here on the left, which I think is probably going to be a little easier. So if I let x equal 0, I'm, I'm using my form of the equation, so this one over here. Um, we're going to get negative 4 squared plus y squared equals 25. So that is 16 plus y squared is 25. So y squared is 9 and so y is plus or minus 3. Okay, so important that they actually hit at the right places compared to your other um, points. So there's positive 3 and there's negative 3. So now let's draw in our semicircle. Alright, so we've got a lot of points to mark here. The center, the end points, the y-intercept, which was 0, negative 3 and 0, 3, and this x-intercept, which is at negative 1, 0. Okay, last one, example 4, sketch this graph here. So again, y equals positive, okay? So the shape of the semicircle I'm dealing with is top half. Again, I know it's a semicircle rather than a square root function because my x underneath the square root is being squared. Okay, so top half of the semicircle. Again, I'm going to rearrange back to the standard form in order to work out where the center and the radius, where the center is and what the radius is. So y equals square root of four minus x plus one all squared plus two. So let's take away two. Let's square both sides. Uh, let's add that x bracket onto the left hand side, or well, onto both sides technically. So x plus 1 all squared plus y minus 2 all squared equals 4. And now we can see that we have a center at negative 1, 2, and we have a radius of 2. Alright, so let's have a look what we've got. So negative 1, 2 with a radius of 2. I only got the top half of the circle. So negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, so negative 1, 2 is my center about here. Sorry, negative 1, 2. My radius is 2, so we're going to come across to this point here and across to this point here and up. Sorry, that's a bit of a big scale there. Up to here. And so we're going to be crossing the y-axis, so we need to calculate that y-intercept, which means letting x equal 0. Um, now, it's up to you. I'm going to go back to the original equation here, because if I let x equal 0 here, I've already got y as the subject, whereas in my version of the equation, I have to rearrange to make y the subject again. So I'm going to go back to here for my y-intercept. So we're going to have y, and it's only the 1, because you've only got the positive square root. Square root of 4 minus 1 squared plus 2. So it's the square root of 4 minus 1 plus, sorry, 4 minus 1 plus 2. So root 3 plus 2. So we'll just label that point. So remember root 3 was about 1.7, so it's going to be about 3.7. Um, so somewhere in here. Alright, so drawing in your circle. Or your semicircle, I should say. 
All right, so this point here is at 0 root 3 plus 2, or 2 plus root 3. This end point here is at 1, 2. This end point here is at minus 3, 2. And otherwise, um, I guess you could say this is a turning point. It's not wrong to mark those points, but you, you get a lot of points in the end. So at the very least, intercepts, end points, centre, making sure that you have at least two points. Okay, and there's just the finishing off exercise 4D, the last two questions in that exercise, which are about semicircles.